Welcome to Barger Woodworking. Here's a simple way to build a super strong garage workbench with two by fours and one sheet of plywood. I'm going to give you everything you need to do it, all the instructions. I'll give you a buy list of what pieces you need to buy and I'll tell you the sizes you need to cut them to make an eight foot long workbench. I even have a bonus section where I'm going to show you how to build some doors for the bench in case you want to cover up the lower section. This is literally a no skill, do it yourself workbench build. Like many things, there's an easy way and a hard way to do them. I'll show you the basic minimal tools you need to do it the hard way, and then I'll show you an intermediate way and an easy way. The intermediate way is with some power tools, some power hand tools, and the easiest way is with some upgraded power tools. Can you do it with just the basic tools? Of course. Stick with me, I'll show you how. These are the most basic tools you could build this bench with. A handsaw, a screwdriver, a pencil, a tape measure. The clamps are really useful, I'd recommend getting them. Uh, a carpenter square, some sandpaper, and screws. I mean, literally, that's all you need to build this. But you'll wear your arms out, and it'll be tar. It won't be easy. Now, the way most people will do this is with a, just a handful of power tools. You'll need a sander, an electric or battery-operated circular saw, a drill. Uh, a couple drill bits, um, and I'll put links to these all in the area below. I'd strongly recommend getting the countersink. That's that gold-tipped bit. Uh, it's made by Amana, and again, I'll have a link below, but boy, it makes the job so much easier. I would recommend a table saw, uh, and if you're going to buy a table saw, you might as well buy the best one that's out there. It's the saw stop. Uh, take a few minutes and Google saw stop. It's amazing. This uh, table saw is one that you cannot cut your fingers with. And it appears that most, uh, from what I've read, most accidents in a shop happen with a table saw. So I strongly recommend getting a saw stop. They are expensive, but I keep saying, how much are my fingers worth? Another thing that is very useful is a chop saw. And if you have enough room in your garage or one of the things you could build with the bench you're building is a station to uh, put your chop saw in. This makes it extremely easy to cut uh, exact lengths of pieces uh, for any kind of job. And uh, it's, it's just a very useful tool, unfortunately. It's probably the second most dangerous tool, and SawStop does not make one. So this one you can hurt yourself with if you're not careful. So be very cautious of any time you use one. Okay, here's your shopping list. Uh, this is for an 8 foot by 24 inch bench. Uh, you're going to need 14 2x4s that are 8 feet long, approximately. I discovered if you buy 2x4s at Lowe's, they're only 93 inches. They're not 96, so be aware of that. Plywood, you can get really rough plywood and you can get nice plywood. It's up to you. Uh, a sheet of 3 quarter inch sanded plywood is around $60 in my area. You're going to need two boxes of screws, one to put the 2x4s together and one to attach the plywood to the frame, uh, two and a half inches and an inch and a quarter. Uh, make sure you have bits for whatever screws you buy. Now, when you want to start cutting, you can cut your top and bottom cross members, four of them at 90 and 7 eighths. Again, I was using the 93 inch ones. Uh, cross members, top and bottom, you're going to need 21 of those at 19 inches. Legs, you're going to need six at 34 and a half inches. Your bottom supports, 
uh, the little ones that hold the bottom shelf, you're going to need six of those at eight inches. Your middle leg supports six at 19 and a half. And your bottom shelf, the two ends, you're going to need two of them at 16 inches. Uh, if you could cut all those first, it'll make job a little bit easier. Okay, let's start cutting. First thing you want to cut here are your uh, some of the 2x4s at the various lengths that I showed you. Here I'm cutting the 19 inch lengths. I set up a stop block with a scrap piece of 2x4, mounted it, and then it's just a matter of dropping your blade in there and cutting them one at a time. Um, just be careful. Here I am trimming the ends to make sure the factory end is nice and square before I trim it to length. Once you do the end, you can just slam each one in there and cut it. Once you get them, the 8 inch pieces cut on the bottom, you can clamp them and screw them together. Uh, Mr. Knucklehead here had the wrong driver, but And here it's just a matter of clamping. Give yourself a uh, countersink with the uh, Mana countersink there and screw all the ends in. Here I am laying out the uh, 2x4 for the shelf. You're going to want the centerpiece there is the 19 and a half inch piece. Double check it to make sure the 2x4 will fit properly and go ahead and countersink and put some screws in. Clamps are really valuable at this point because you can hold it together and they won't shift on you. And just keep doing this until you have four done and then lightly sand everything, set them up figure out which is left and right and front and rear. Here I'm laying a 2x4 as a spacer just to, doesn't, it's just two scrap pieces of wood, but I'm trying to figure out exactly the width because I know I cut my piece of plywood at 24 inches, so I want to make it wide enough that I can have a one inch overlap on the front and I would recommend checking your moldings against the wall and generally they're three quarter inch moldings give yourself at least an inch overlap in the back that way you uh, won't have any surprises when you try to put it together all right now that I've cut all the pieces I'm gonna fit them together Again, I'm using the clamps to figure out exactly the distance. And when you lay it out, you're going to want a little scrap piece of plywood to put on the end to get it exactly flush. And do that on both ends. Before you tie it all together, though, it's smart to put a framing square on it or Carpenter Square, or Tri-Square, many different names. This is an oversized one. Uh, they make, I think they're 9 inch. This one's a 12 inch. Uh, I use both of them frequently. But it helps keep everything square and keeps your legs lined up properly. If you clamp it like that, it'll pull everything into square. And then you can go ahead and screw it. Double check your work. Don't just, just screw them together. Double check them because stuff happens. And here's the other end. Just take your time. Screw them together. Make sure you're not screwing through the wood. Um, generally, that's two by fours are an inch and a half, so two of them is three inches. I bought 
two and a half inch screws. So here I'm putting it together and just seeing what it looks like. I notice I have the two center supports there and I'm measuring to find the exact center. Now I'm trying to figure out how much distance to put between the up, upper supports and the lower supports and I use my iPhone as a calculator. I think it came out to 10 inches is what I used uh, and I think I did 11 first and it was too big. Now I'm doing 10 and that seemed to be the right distance. Now these are a lot of supports. You could probably get by with just two supports or three or four. I think I have eight in there. Uh, but I wanted this to be nice and sturdy. I didn't want any chance of, you know, the top flexing at all. And if you do it right and make it nice and strong, you won't have to go back and strengthen it later. Here I'm cutting all 16. You can see what a help having a stop block is there be, rather than measuring each one. And I've found when you do measure each one by hand, everyone's going to be a slightly different. And if you are not careful, you'll have a mess at the end. So this way it keeps everything straight. Here I clamp the, the four upper pieces together and I'm marking them at that one mark that I made on the top one. Those are your two upper and two lower. And with the pencil marks, I'm able to uh, precisely center all of the uh, cross members. It helps again to have a clamp. Now, you don't have to have one, but if you have one, it makes it easier because you can clamp it nice and tight, get the thing centered right on your line and go ahead and screw it. Um, and then just move on down. You could also use nails doing this. Uh, many people do use nails, uh, number one, because they're cheaper. Uh, but I like using screws because they're a little more precise. They, uh, you can take it apart if you need to and salvage the wood. Uh, and I can't tell you how many times, uh, the one I just built for my son at his home in Portland, we salvaged a bunch of wood from the, uh, table that came apart. And as long as it's screwed together, you can unscrew it and reuse the wood. While you're thinking about it, please click on the subscribe button and the bell so that you get all of the notices when I do make a new video. I'd really appreciate it. It does help. I never realized how much, but these are a lot of work to put together. So I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe. Anyway, I'm just finishing up with some light sanding. Uh, and then I'm marking top so I know which is the top because all the tops are lined up. The bottom sometimes they're not. Here I test fit it and I put a couple screws in just to make sure it doesn't fall down. Although my screwdriver fell down one of the times I was working on it. Again, I'm using the clamps to hold the center braces up and double checking my measurements and thinking about what I should do next. Once you get everything lined up, get your measurements and you can cut the uh, bottom for the two shelves. You should have half of your sheet of plywood left over I believe I had to cut these down to 22 inches uh, to make them fit, but I, uh, you know, your measurements, you'll need to check them to make sure, but it uses up almost the whole entire sheet of plywood. Here I'm adding the two supports at the two ends for the shelves. Uh, I made them 16 inches. They could be 12, 13, 
you know, they could be just about any distance, just so it'll catch the end. Um, now we're on to the pieces for the doors. Uh, this is the bonus part. I bought some, I believe they're one and a half um, by three quarter inch pieces of wood from uh, Lowe's. Cut them down to uh, a standard length. And then here I'm cutting the half inch plywood for the doors. I'm going to run them through, um, I believe the doors were 20 inches and cut them both at 20 inches square. And once you get them all to the exact same size, and this is where a table saw really comes in handy. I mean, you could do this with a, with a hand saw or a circular saw, but it would be a pain. Here I cut everything to the same length, fitted them all together, and gluing them up and using a brad nailer. Again, if you don't have a brad nailer, you could use a hammer and some, I believe these are three quarter inch brads to nail it down, but put some glue on it. Now I felt along the edge and made sure I had like a 16th overlap on both sides and then just squared everything up. I did that for all four doors. Here I'm sanding the ends. Uh, usually there's a little bit of uh, some little pieces of wood stuck on the ends that it's good to get off. Here I'm running them through and cleaning off that sixteenth of an inch. If you made them just a little bit bigger than you needed them to be, when you cut them down they'll be the exact size. But this I was okay at just about any dimension. I, I had probably a half inch on each side to play with because I made them plenty big that I could fit them all together. Here I cut all four of them. Now I was going to put them through the table saw again and I realized I can't cut them on the table saw. So I went okay. So I took them to the chop saw. Lined up the blade right along the edge and at that point I realized I could only do two sides and not all four. So I flipped them over upside down and cut off the other ones. And here I am just fine tuning the edges, running them through, and make sure they're all square. Now here I put a little bit of uh, wood putty into all the nail holes. I'm sanding off the wood putty to get it nice and looking good getting the rough edges off. I mean, here you could use a piece of sandpaper and your hand, but it's so much easier with a little uh, orbital sander here. And I tried pulling off these stickers. Whoever, if you're the guy who designed them, you're putting too much darn glue on them. Make them easier to pull off and have them pull off all at once. I use left, my leftover Amazon boxes all the time for uh, just backing and for spraying and painting and you can see the paint that's smeared on these. This is a uh, marine spar urethane, which is a spray urethane. It's a semi-gloss. Now I'm laying out the doors to figure out 
the best way they're going to look. Once I got two that look good together, I'm installing the hinges. Bought these hinges at Lowe's. I believe they were $4 each. And uh, they're fairly simple. You just line them up. I used that block of wood just as a spacer for all four hinges. You line them up, drill some holes, and screw them in. I will say that when I did install them at the house, these were a little bit of a pain because they, they're self-closing and they have some tension in the spring and you really have to push in on it to get them level. Otherwise, when you initially start the screw in, they are, let's say, a quarter of an inch apart in the center and by the time you push them in, they're almost flush against the other door. So you need to leave yourself about oh, a quarter of an inch or so. Here I'm matching up the other set of doors and putting the hinges on that. Same process, you just lay them out, mark your holes, drill a eighth of an inch deep pilot hole and it just makes it easier to start your screws. I love that drill. It's a 12 volt DeWalt uh, battery operated drill. All the other drills are 20 volt, uh, but it weighs about half of what the other uh, drills weigh. So uh, when you start getting a little older, every little bit helps. So these are a lot easier to carry and use all day than a uh, full size drill. Here I've got everything stacked up in the garage. There's two kitchen cabinets there from Lowe's that the client wanted installed, as well as all the pieces for the uh, workbench. He also wanted me to install a pegboard, uh, and some of that wood on the top is for the pegboard, and the plywood is are the bottom two shelves. They're all pre-cut, ready to be dropped right in. Now again, I pre-measured them to make sure they work. Here's the workbench. As I <laughs> started trying to clean up the mess I left there, here I'm cutting out for the uh, outlet. With pegboard, you need about three quarter, half inch to three quarter inch behind the pegboard to stick the metal. Uh, clips in and get them to uh, stay upright. So we uh, we have some inch and a quarter screws that I had bought for the uh, plywood to attach the plywood to the framing. So that's what I'm using on those. Here is when I wish my wife was with me to help hold some of this stuff. Uh, I'll never admit it, but I do need her. Once you get them level, the clamps really come in handy. And get them clamped up there, get them level, and then screw them in. One side's easy because, as I said before, those clips have some uh, tension in them. And if you put, like I just did here, this is again a learning process. When you put them up, if you put them tight or even close to tight up together, when the, the tension goes out of the spring, it moves it in about a quarter of an inch and it ended up being too tight. The doors were hitting. So I had to move the hinge over another roughly quarter of an inch to get it to work. Uh, but once you got the first two done, the rest were relatively easy. Here's the finished cabinet, all four of them on the bottom. I came back the next day and put a piece of plywood on that end to close it off. But it came out nice. Uh, the white hardy board on the counter is a nice touch. It can be 
covered when it gets worn, but it gives you it makes it a lot easier to find screws and stuff, but also gives you a little bit of a replaceable cover for the plywood. Um, and that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and uh, thank you for watching.